Good evening, everybody. And I have in front of me the very special person. I know I have. I said all the time. I have in front of me Michael D. Butler, and he is a global speaker. He's a media coach, and he's a book publisher, and he's also my friend. So, Michael, I'm so happy that you're here with me on my New Year. So well, happy, happy New Year! Happy New Year to you, and congratulations on the book, Ilona. I've been hearing so many good things. And I know you let me peek at a few chapters. It, it's really, really inspiring and just delightful. So I'm so proud of you and I want to say congratulations. Thank you so much. That means the world to me, Michael. Without you, it would not have, have happened. My dream came true because of you. <laughs> well, there's, there's so many good endorsements here. I was just reading through this before and, and it's over 300 pages. How long did it take you to write Opium? It's, it took me about two years to write. Actually, it took me a year and a half to write and, you know, and now six months to produce and publish that. So um, it started with the idea and actually with a dream. I dreamed about it. And I always thought that this dream is absolutely impossible until I said to myself, why not? Why not me? Why can she and not me? So you know what? I did it. <laughs> you, you, you did it and you just went number one on Amazon. So congratulations. Thank and, you. you know, people are hurting right now and your name actually means joy. So I just want to say I'm so proud of you. I think, you know, since the pandemic, the readership has been up globally. But I think your book, What is Opium of the Almond Tree? That's such an intriguing title and subtitle. What's the meaning behind the title? The opium is just your place of happiness. You know, I know it may may seem like a little bit negative and bring to somebody else some kind of, um, you know, resemble something negative. But to me, this opium was my childhood. That's where my dreams and inspiration and aspiration began to happen. And when I, you know, grew as an adult, you know, with my problems, with my, you know, like with what adulthood brings to you, Right. I, I, I was sitting one day in the kitchen and I was thinking, why can't I go back to my childhood? And I was I closed my eyes and I was smelling, inhaling this this opium of this almond tree of my childhood. And I'm yeah. like, this is it. This is it. Because we all have that opium in our lives that we want to keep using it, keep keep going back to it. Uh, that's just so motivational and inspiring. You know, a lot of people will write from their pain and that's kind of your high point. Was there some, was there a low point that you hit where you discovered your pain and said, I can't stay here. And what did that look like? What did oh, that my, feel like? My pain came from the rejections, from rejections from my own relatives, rejection mm -hmm. from my own grandparents who didn't mm -hmm. accept me because I was the, from the, different culture. I had the blonde hair and I looked completely different because my mom from a different country. And also a rejection from entering to the universities because of my Russian last name. Rejections from being just uh, growing up as a woman in my society with looked completely different. But I did not look at that as being a victim. I did not victimize myself and grew up with idea that I was a victim. That was never a part of me. I used every closed doors. I used every no to fuel me, to kind of um, let them know, here you go. You didn't want me. This is what I have accomplished. You closed the door before me to enter the university. I went to the best universities in Europe with all full scholarship paid. My relatives called me ugly. I entered the beauty pageant and I won. And there's Good. so many things that I turned this no, wow. you know, to fuel me and say, you know what? I am capable. I can do it. Those rejections were just, you know what? I needed those things. Maybe I needed yeah. those rejections. Otherwise, I would have just be in, uh, I would live in mediocrity world. And I am not a mediocre person. I am Ilona. I am unique. I am special. Yeah. I am a joy. Yeah. I am happiness. I am the light. You are. You walk into a room, you light it up. People are lining up to get you on their podcast and get you on their stage. And I just think of the pain that a lot of 
children around the world are going through right now, you know, uh, particularly women and particularly girls, but also boys as well, dealing with that rejection. And I think your story gives them a lot, a lot of hope. You know, I grew up on the farm in Oklahoma and really kind of my turning point was I was naturally like you outgoing and gregarious and the life of the party. But when I went to public school at age five, that's when I realized I had a speech problem Mm -hmm. or I let myself and my lack of confidence tell me I had a speech problem because everybody was making fun of me and I was stuttering and I couldn't get a word out. But in the midst of that, I was able to eventually overcome that and come out of my shell and be who I was, which was a journalist. I start at age 11. I started going around with a cassette recorder and interviewing people. So I'm so excited about your story. I know you're speaking everywhere. You're, you're being asked to be on podcasts. How do people find you and follow you? Because I think your story, what's so amazing about books in English is they're getting more read outside of the U.S. And I think you really are a cosmopolitan politan woman with tons of self-confidence you're going to inspire a lot of young women to step up and and make their own way and not give up or throw in the towel but to make it happen what's what's next for you and what plans do you have now that the book's out my plan is to uh, to write the series of the uh, children's book for the girls mm. I have started already and one will be published very soon for the girls ages of uh, five to eight and love- also then uh, 10 to 13 and 13 to 15. And then this book is 16 and up. Beautiful. So this is the series that I, I was inspired to write. And those messages are so simple, unique, but so motivational and empowering because I want to use my voice as a woman, as the from this inner girl's child, childhood, this voice to speak to this little girl because look at this media what it does to us yes look at the media what it does to our children right now how their their self-confidence they don't have one because Mm -hmm. you know no matter how much they try to impress others they will never be good enough and my message to them is that you are so unique do not settle for less and do not have to be like everybody else. If you wear glasses, wear glasses with the dignity. Yes. If you have a speech problem, have a speech problem the best way you can have. Yeah. You know, if you have a short hair and you have some kind of maybe scar in your body, wear it with the pride because it's yeah. yours. It makes you unique. Be who you are because yes. you are beautiful. Nobody has ever been like you. I, I love that. That is so powerful. What speaks to you so much about the almond tree? What is special about the almond tree that's in the title of your book? It's my dream. Because as I grew up and went through the war, I, I was uh, taking away everything. I was, I was living the life of the dream. My uh, people, instead of going to the bank, they would come to us, borrow money from my parents. That's Mm -hmm. how rich we were. I Mm -hmm. was eating the caviar with a spoon, the black caviar with a spoon. That's Mm -hmm. how rich we were. And Mm -hmm. despite of that, I did not learn to appreciate what I had until Mm -hmm. I went through the war. Mm -hmm. And then um, I stopped dreaming. I stopped inspiring myself. Nothing motivated me to jump out of the bed to start the day. So the opium of the almond tree was taking me back to the stage of the childhood and let me dream again. I want to wake up every day so I can not just dream, I can put it, my dreams into actions. I I love that. That, That's so empowering. And I know you've already been getting great feedback from your beta readers and those that have read it now that we've recently launched. And uh, I know that faith is a big component in the book and in your heart. How important is faith to you? And what what advice would you give a 15-year-old version of yourself? Uh, The faith is just a start point. It's just like a seed. Faith without deeds are nothing. So, and also faith produces hope. Mm -hmm. Hope produces this inspiration, the joy that wants to make you live and 
and just fulfill yourself in the platform of this planet until you realize what is the purpose of your life is you will be always seeking to the wrong places, among the wrong crowds, reading the wrong book and trying to be someone else. But faith inspired me to find the purpose of my life. What is the purpose of my life? Just to be a mother, I am a mother. Just to be the woman, yes, I am. Just to inspire somebody else, yes, it's it's a good thing. But what is the purpose for me, for Ilona? When you, you know, you 15-year-old girl, the beautiful creature of God, the masterpiece of God, will find out this special calling in your life, the special mission, why were you created? You will be so happy. And sometimes we think that we have to be a speakers to fulfill our mission. Sometimes we feel that we have to be the next opera, the next uh, big thing. No, all you have to do is to allow God to enjoy who you are. That's it. That's powerful. I love that. Well, congratulations. I am so excited for you. And I know this book and I know your platform. I know your voice is going to reach all around the globe. Short videos on my YouTube, which is IP Resilience. Uh, so we just very inspired with my team, with people who wants to, you know, use the, their voices, their stories to connect and inspire somebody else. So let's do it together, guys. Why not? Congrats. So thank you, Michael, so much, you know, <laughs> for doing that. And you're such a global speaker, and I'm so happy and proud to have you in my life. So to have you part of my my dreams to come true. So God bless you, Michael, with the bottom of my heart, the bottom of my heart.